Good morning. Welcome to morning prayer at Holy Comforter Episcopal Church for Wednesday, April 17th, 2024. Our service of morning prayer begins with the opening sentence on page 77 of your Book of Common Prayer. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Moving to page 79. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Together, we will read the Christ our Passover, the Pascha Nostrum, on page 83 of the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia! Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he gives, he gives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia! Christ our Passover has been raised from the dead, who first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Our appointed psalm for the day is Psalm 38. We will read all verses, verses 1 through 22. And this is on page 636. Again, that's Psalm 38 on page 636. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me in your wrath. For your arrows have already pierced me, and your hand presses hard upon me. There is no health in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no soundness in my body because of my sin. For my iniquities overwhelm me. Like a heavy burden, they are too much for me to bear. My wounds stink and fester by reason of my foolishness. I am utterly bowed down and prostrate. I go about in mourning all the day long. My loins are filled with searing pain. There is no health in my body. <clears throat> I am utterly numb and crushed. I wail because of the groaning of my heart. O oh Lord, you know all my desires, and my sighing is not hidden from you. My heart is pounding, my strength has failed me, and the brightness of my eyes is gone from me. My friends and companions draw back from my affliction. My neighbors stand far off. Those who seek after my life lay snares for me. 
Those who strive to hurt me speak of my ruin and plot treachery all the day long. But I am like the deaf who do not hear, like those who are mute and do not open their mouth. I have become like one who does not hear and from whose mouth comes no defense. For in you, O Lord, have I fixed my hope. You will answer me, O Lord my God. For I said, do not let them rejoice at my expense. Those who gloat over me when my foot slips, truly, I am on the verge of falling. And my pain is always with me. I will confess my iniquity and be sorry for my sin. Those who are my enemies without cause are mighty, and many in number are those who wrongfully hate me. Those who repay evil for good slander me, because I follow the course that is right. O Lord, do not forsake me. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the book of Exodus in the 19th chapter, verses 16 to 25. On the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning as well as a thick cloud on the mountain and a blast of a trumpet so loud that all the people who were in the camp trembled. Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God. They took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Now, Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended upon it in fire. The smoke went up like the smoke of a kiln, while the whole mountain shook violently. As the blast of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses would speak, and God would answer him in thunder. When the Lord descended upon Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain, the Lord summoned Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go down and warn the people not to break through to the Lord to look, otherwise many of them will perish. Even the priests who approach the Lord must consecrate themselves, or the Lord will break out against them. Moses said to the Lord, The people are not permitted to come up to Mount Sinai, for you yourself warned us, saying, Set limits around the mountain and keep it holy. The Lord said to him, Go down and come up, bringing Aaron with you, but do not let either the priests or the people break through to come up to the Lord, otherwise he will break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us together read Canticle 11, the third song of Isaiah, which begins on page 87. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, Darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our gospel reading is from the book of Matthew, 
the third chapter, verses 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so for now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, Suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So today, we have where Jesus arrives at the Jordan River to be baptized by John. And as you might think, as we might feel, he feels unworthy to do it. So they have a conversation which is recorded only here in Matthew. It's not found in the other Synoptic Gospels, and of course, nor in John. And despite John the Baptist's hesitation, Jesus assures him this needs to be done, that it's in fulfillment of God's righteousness. So, of course, (laughs) as you would think, Jesus is pretty persuasive. And so John backs down, and they proceed, and Jesus is baptized. Just like you and me, Jesus was baptized. He was embodying the behavior that he would later command we as his followers to observe sacramentally. And today it certainly bears different meetings, uh, meanings sorry, in different faith traditions. So for many, it is a cleansing, um, representing a cleansing of sin. Um, For others, it serves as an entry right into membership into their communities of faith. And for others, it is that visual representation of a dying to the old self and rising again under faith and righteousness. In the waters of baptism, we are connected to God and our communities, and to all of salvation history in the church universal. So some believe that this was not only Jesus modeling submission to the Father, but also a consecration and a commissioning of his coming ministry but that it was also an act of standing in solidarity with us, those who were under sin, and those who also often feel unworthy of God's love and grace. And to each of those things, each of those things that we just explored, I would be inclined in some way to say yes, That's, those things are right. Whichever one of those things speaks to you. The bottom line is, it's a powerful act vividly portrayed in the gospel. And what happens next sets a tone for the ministry of Jesus. As we heard in our scripture, there is an opening of the heavens and a descent of the dove, capital D, (laughs) dove, on Jesus, and an affirmation of him and his coming ministry. We see this was no ordinary baptism. This one, this one is different. We get a clear sense of who Jesus is. God acknowledges Jesus from the heavens as his son, 
and the beloved. And we hear that in view of that affirmation, in view of what is to lie ahead. Um, you know, in this profoundly important moment, Jesus then is about to embark on the testing in the wilderness. And after that, his public ministry. So witnessing the coming of the Spirit in the form of the dove, we have together uh, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit. It reminds us that the Spirit comes to all who are baptized, that it comes to empower all persons in the ministry that all believers are called to in service to God in a variety of ways. And one of the beautiful parts of our Episcopal tradition is that like most of our church life, um, we participate in the sacrament of baptism as a community. As candidates are coming forward um, into their own baptismal vows, in our tradition, we as a community renew our own baptismal covenant, baptismal vows, every time that happens. And being part of that, um, those moments and that witnessing the magnitude of God's redeeming love and abundant grace every time we see the baptismal waters and the baptismal rites is just a beautiful thing to participate in in community. So baptism, as, as we can tell by the comments this morning and in the scriptures, is one of the important, uh, uh, one of the most important aspects in the life of the church. Although we do this in differing ways across differing faith traditions, we sprinkle, we <laughs> some submerge, some sprinkle in the Episcopal rubrics, uh, both actually are addressed. Actually, submerge, submerging is addressed, um, and then if you can't submerge, you sprinkle. Um, Folks baptize in fonts. They, um, in some faith traditions, obviously, uh, tubs, baptistries, rivers, whatever the practice or mode, no matter how much water is used, and regardless of the location of the event, the spirit, like the dove in our reading today, um, as descended in Jesus, is present in the act of baptism and infusing um, those baptized with possibilities of new beginnings, um, new lives, uh, their new life um, as they follow Jesus um, and do God's will. Thanks be to God for the, the beautiful event that we hear of today and for the, the beautiful grace of the Spirit um, as we walk in God's will for our life and ministry baptized into the church universal. Thanks be to God. Let us together move to the Apostles' Creed, which is found on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We will pray suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, 
and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Our collect of the day for the fifth week in Easter can be found on page 225. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Turning back to page 99, the collect for the renewal of life. O oh God, the King eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On page 101, a prayer for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, we ask for the prayers of the church. In our chat, we lift up our prayer offered for Allison, John, Christy, Brinley, Elizabeth, Dave, Rachel, Mark, Tim, Suzanne, David, Kendra, Ivy, Parker, Jan, Lord, we ask that you draw near to the needs of each one of those. Thank you. We lift up Lord Ken, Ellie, Bill, Judy, Gabe, Dee, Brenda, Nell, and Dwayne, Lord. We thank you for your intervention on each of their needs. Father, we lift up friends needing prayers for healing. Deborah, John, Debbie, Gabrielle, Christine, Kathy, Rhonda and Herb, and Christy, thank you, Lord. Lord, we lift up the needs of Chris, Elizabeth, Eli. Father, we lift up the needs of Brenda's family. We lift Rashida, Ken, and Michael, Father. We thank you for the intervention on their behalf. We continue to lift the prayers of yesterday on behalf of Bob, Lord. Thank you. 
For those of you who are lifting the prayer needs found in our weekly service bulletin, we pray for those in the family of Holy Comforter in need, Celeste, Elaine, Roger, David, Walter, May, Cynthia, Lee and Bonnie, Urban Rhonda, Chris, Russell and Marcy, Aaron, Charles and Kate, Russell, Maria, Sterling, Marcy, Chandler, Pat, Anita, Patty and Bill, Mary Claire, Jan, and Jackie. Thank you, Lord, for your intervention. We continue to pray for all who are serving in the military and those in areas of conflict. We pray for their needs and their protection, particularly Matthew and Hayden. We pray with joy for the Feast of Nativity, i.e. the birthdays, and celebrate with Mara, Olive, Janet, and Susan this week. We pray in celebration for the anniversary of the union of Thomas and Mary Grace. Thank you, Lord, for that. Father, we pray for our national church, that you would inhabit it and that it would always be on mission for you and particularly for the health of our presiding bishop, Bishop Michael. And thank you for the assistance of our bishops in our diocese, Bishop Scott and Bishop Chip, and for especially for the standing and steering committees and those members that are doing such committed work. We pray for our local church, for our vestry and lay leaders, and for all that they give, for our staff and for our clergy here and for their families that support them while they do the work that they're called to do. We pray for all of our upcoming events, Father. We pray for Holy Comforter Episcopal School, for all of the students within it and their families. We pray, Lord, for the teachers and staff and administration that care for them so well. We pray particularly for Jake, we pray for the Houses of Faith here in Tallahassee, for their um, congregants, for their staff, for their clergy. And Lord, we lift up your church universal on this earth. Let us together join in the general thanksgiving that can be found on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A prayer of St. Christostom. On 102, Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. 
Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Y'all have a great day. Spread the light and be the church. <laughs>